Okay, so, hello everyone. I'm Yamina, the artist of Sister Claire, and I am joined today by... The one, the only, the incredible, the indelible, Ash Barnes. I write the missing moments, and I also help write the comic. And I did jazz hands, but nobody can see it. And I am David, and I participate <laughs> sometimes <laughs> in the live draw. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> People like you, David. When you're not here, there's people who ask, is David going to be there? <laughs> but, uh, so today I'm going to be working on some more tea tins. Let me uh, show you what these tea tins look like. Like here you can see the Aussie one that I did recently. And today I want to work on Gabrielle's tea, which is, where is it? Gabrielle, here. Because it's really rare, apparently, that it's in stock, and I desperately want to buy it, but I won't buy it until I can get the art done for it, so I gotta get that art done. By the way, if you want the link to the teas, I'll paste it in the chat here. If you want to take a look, the Lupo tea is no, no longer available. I mean, it will come back. It's just, it's out of stock right now, which is so unfortunate given that it made an appearance in the comic literally the last page. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's available wherever you are. I know that they have different stores in different parts of the U.S. Um, and for us, it ships from New Jersey and they're out there. But okay, let me, let me get started on this. Mm -hmm. I wish I could give myself an avatar as a guest, but I don't think I can. No, I, I think you have to make an account. You should make an account anyway. And then I would make you an admin, and you could ban people. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, no, no. Oh, Laura is asking, girls, do you think later we could meet Cookie Cat? Maybe you could. We could definitely do that. I yeah. think I won't. I'll, I'll end the recording first, though. So people on the, the art YouTube channel don't get confused why suddenly there's cats. Yeah. Oh. Did I only make two teas in her blend? I guess so. It's a very simple blend. Hmm. But they're both white teas. <laughs> Kelandra said, also, oh my god, the last missing moments. Oh my <laughs> Jeez, Ash. What? Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Laura said, Ash told us last night in the live act that some people have been complaining about the latest missing moments. That's true. I have gotten quite a bit of hate mail from people who think that I'm just dragging it out to be mean. That's not true. I don't think I have to tell anyone in this chat that, though. Like, I think everyone here understands that I am not, in fact, a terrible, cruel person who just likes to torture everyone in the audience. I have to evolve something called a plot. <laughs> There's build-up that has to happen. Really important things that need to be set in motion. And if people can't appreciate that, well, they need to find another comic to read. I'm debating if I should put lavender in the ingredients because it's only an accent and I haven't done that for any of the other teas accents, but, yeah. but all the other teas have three ingredients listed. Uh, I'll, I'll take it out. <laughs> I'll be consistent. <laughs> People have noticed that uh, King Michel has gray hair now. Yeah, so that, does Sylvia. Yeah, and that Sylvia is starting to get it. And Laura is asking, does that mean Oscar will also get early gray hair? I wouldn't say that his that um, her parents' hair is early. Well, maybe Sylvia's is, but Sylvia's had a pretty rough life. Yeah, but I mean, Michelle's not that old. Yeah, but he's also had a pretty rough 
life. He's he's had a very stressful life. Yeah, Although, it's like you, Obama going gray. Yeah, though when you imagine what Oscar's been through, <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonder she has any hair. Left. Oscar dies it. <laughs> Oscar uses products. <laughs> At the end of this whole adventure, doubtless Oscar will have some gray hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, David. Do you need a chair or? Oh no, David's scurrying away. Okay, uh, bye. Yeah, bye. Maybe he'll return later. Okay. <laughs> What kind of uh, cup should I have Gabrielle drinking out of? A shell. I don't know. That's what I was thinking. Like, what would be something kind of oceany for her to drink out of? See, stop looking at yourself. <laughs> oh, Joel suggested martini glass. <laughs> Japanese teacup. Mm. Mm. Oh, like a martini glass from Atlantis? Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Although it's tea, it's... <laughs> it's not a martini. Martini. <laughs> martini, you. Oh, you. Yeah. I married this. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway. <sighs> I, I'm partial to the shell idea. <laughs> Drinking tea out of a shell. And wondering why it's salty. Oh, um, I think, I think some people might, like, some people might be confused about the ages of the monarchs. Well, when you think about it, um, if you've read the live right where Oscar walks in the garden for the first time with King Michelle alone, where he comes to visit her, uh, during duty hours and essentially says, we're going to have a bonding moment. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure that's not quite what was on his mind, but in any case, uh, <clears throat> that's what happens. If you read that live right, there is direct reference in it to Michelle's age, or at least you can, you can deduce how old he must be now, given how old he was when Oscar was conceived. The answer is not that old. 40s. He's in his 40s. I'm going to Google seashell cup and see what horrible things I can come up with. Fizzy Pop Pop says, You guys sound pretty soft and I have my volume up high. Look at this. Perfetto. We sound quiet? Hmm. Does anyone else hear us quietly? Let's see what the chat says. I could probably turn my output capture higher, but it seems like... Um, Calandra says it's quiet. Ad makes art says... And solar. Yeah, turn it up a little bit. Okay, how's, how's this, guys? Is this better? Is this too loud? We'll try not to screech or anything. I think we're also just talking kind of quietly. Okay, <clears throat> people say that's better. All right. Yeah. What do you think of this cup? I think it's perfect. I also am partial to this cup here. <laughs> it doesn't really look like a tea cup, but it looks like something Gabby would enjoy drinking out of. The Nautilus. Ah, uh, yes. I think it's fine. I think I'll try... Oh, here's another sea shelly sort of cup. Oh, that's cute. I like that a lot. Do it. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Lara said, Ash, I had a question. Well, fire away, darling. Oh, it's Calandra's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Calandra. Happy birthday to you, and many more. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke got so excited by her singing. <laughs> Zeke's like, what's all this singing about? I want to be part of it. 
I wish Zeke was one of those dogs who would howl when people sing. That well, you know, so I cute. could get him to make noise if you really want. Yeah, but he wouldn't howl. He'd make an annoying barking noise. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same. He would deafen the chat, so let's not. Let's not do that. Yeah. Zeke wishes you a happy birthday, too. Laura asked a very good question. She said, I think last night you mentioned Gabby's beloved, and I'm not rereading The Pinnacle of the Sea, and <laughs> we know that Gabby is polyamorous. Is Gabby's beloved Clementine, or is she in a relationship with Clementine and someone else? That's a good question. Spoilers. Spoilers. Can I say something sort yes. of spoilery? I think it's it's fair enough to say that she has different sorts of relationships with different people. Mm -hmm. I was I was wondering if I was allowed to say that. Yeah, I I think something that we can say that's not really spoilery is that she definitely gives certain relationships more priority and importance than others. It's not to say that she doesn't care about other people, but. I don't know if priority and importance are the, the, the correct words, but certain people mean different things to her. Mm -hmm. Like, they fulfill different roles. Like There are some people that are more like friends, friends with benefits sort of thing. Yeah, although, I don't know. Does she have friends with benefits with any of the people we have in mind? Oh, well, I had some in mind, <laughs> but... Who? Who? I, I'm not going to talk about it in front of the chat, in front of the kids' ass. I can read your lips. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fine. That one's fine. No yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> Blaze said, they're her pod, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, Gabby has a pod. But, and she does consider them all... Uh, she loves them all. <laughs> and... And it's not the, it's not like, one's her brother and one's her sister and yay. It's, I mean, they are all vital, important relationships to her. We'll get into that later. Uh, you'll see a lot more of Gabby coming up. Real soon. Really, really soon. Can't wait. All right. Kelandra asks, I just want to know, are we ever going to find out how Gabby became blue? No, never. Never. Never, never. <laughs> of course you're going to find out why she's blue. It's a yes. mystery for the times. <laughs> it's something that I don't think many of you will see coming, but you'll see. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Seek, can you not? <clears throat> I have drawn Gabby so many times, and I always forget which side of her face her eyes <laughs> I need to look at the latest wallpaper uh, yeah Laura said okay it's on her on my left her right eye yeah. okay Laura last night in the chat people were asking about Gabby's beloved and I said Gabby's beloved will break your heart that's true mm -hmm. that's, it breaks my heart it makes me that's the Mm. We're like at Food Lion talking about what to have for dinner, and then we think about it and start crying. Yeah, like we're pushing the cart going, <laughs> oh, oh no, way. do you want the mini ice cream sandwiches or the regular ones? Oh. I want a cornetto. I don't, I don't want it right now, because I can't really draw while I eat it, but I would like one soon. <clears throat> I know what you could do. Could you heat me up some water for tea? Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. It's going to annoy everyone in the chat. Maybe I'll just have water like okay. from the fridge. I'll get you some. I'll make some tea later. Ad makes art asked, did Gabby get turned into a shard, then uh, get purified by Clementine and become blue? No. <laughs> nope. Good theory, but no. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to get you some water. Thank you. Oh, and I'm going to fall, apparently. Trip all over the court. Yep. That's my job. Here you go. You get the water that's in the root. 
with your bubble. Oh boy. Yummy. Zeke, do you want a chili? Maybe I'll have the tea a little later. I just, I, I get self-conscious of boiling water when I'm live streaming because I know it makes a lot of noise. When will I implement my plan to take over the world? Mm -hmm. Who says I haven't already? Who says it's not in progress? Mm -hmm. Who says you're not all of it? Yeah. Who says that I'm not putting subliminal messages into this very live stream? Oh, I love your OCs, Joel. <laughs> Joel. <laughs> Joe does the Puma OCs, Puma Witch characters. I really like their designs. <laughs> Gabby is a descendant of Violet Beauregard. <coughs> Salute. Thank you. Let's see. Ah! What have I done? Calandra asks, how old is Gabby? About, oh, that made me sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I was going to say, about Clementine's, oh, shit. <laughs> well, um, she, isn't she a little younger? younger? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's a, like, well, you know who is exactly Clementine's age? Jackson. Well. According to the timeline. Is that, is. Yeah. is that true? Okay. Um, let me think. Jackson is the only character, I think, who is the same age as Clementine. Would have been. Um, let me think. I'm Clementine might actually be a year or so older than Jackson. I'd have to look at the timeline again. It's been a long time. Unless you've changed it the last time I looked at it. If I, I definitely left some room for flexibility. So if if Clementine's older, it's not by much. Um, but Clementine and Gabby are approximately the same age, but Gabby's species matures a little faster. Like, they live a long time, but their childhoods are shorter. That's important. <clears throat> Lowell asked, are there more OCs coming our way in the comics and missing moments? Yes, there are. I hope so, because huh. I hope our our uh, Patreon doesn't start to flounder if nobody wants to put an OC in anymore, but we've never had a We've never had a, with that. a shortage. Yeah. No, there are, um, yeah, there's, there's others. I and mean, there's uh, original characters who have been introduced already. Who you will certainly see again. Zrina is very important. The Helsing, uh, who is currently, well, y'all don't know this yet, so this is kind of a spoiler, but she's come with Clementine to Throne of Mind. She's very put upon. Well, it was mentioned that there were Helsings joining her. I think it can be presumed that one of them would be Zrina. The one Helsing that was mentioned already. Well, there's there's been more than one. There's Zrina, Anuja, I think I mentioned Gretchen, and was it Hilda? I can't recall. But I mean, the one that was actually, you know, had a speaking role and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, <laughs> Joe is putting Gabby's species in quotation marks. I mean Selkies. Like, Gabby is a Selkie. Was. Or was. <laughs> Dying whale noises. <laughs> Bereft moaning. Bereft is a good word. I know, you like to, you like to use it a lot. That's how I got yeah. attached to it. Yeah. Bereft. Alright. Alright. Oh, I don't know what Gabby should wear. Maybe nothing. <laughs> yeah, that'll encourage people to buy the tea. Woo! Fancy woo! Oh, Snowy's or, here. Hi, Snowy. Uh, hey, Snowy. 
I know. I know. I'll look at rosegal.com. I've been looking at a lot of stuff on rosegal.com and wondering if I'm cute enough to wear these things. Wait, this is not the stuff I want to wear. I don't know you're cute enough to wear anything. Uh, um, let me... They had... Uh, shoot. Oh, there's a new reader of the comic in the chat called Smoothie Smoothie. Oh, and they're I like that us, name. Yeah, they're asking us what's up. We're happy to <laughs> see you. <laughs> yeah. I think I could see Gabby wearing some stuff like this. The problem is... The picture is so cropped that you wouldn't really see anything she's wearing. All you'd see is a plunging neckline. <laughs> here, it's right here. Oh, it's behind my computer. I have that song stuck in my head. Oh, I think that I found myself a cheerleader. She is always right there when I need her. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> Ad makes art said to Ariel's outfit from The Little Mermaid. Uh, the <laughs> like, potato sack. The clamshell bra. I'm oh. Sure. <laughs> God, <what's that>? <laughs> 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 when I think of her, I don't even consider that an outfit. It's just a shell. When I think of the first, like, clothing she wears, I think of the potato shell. So, like, many people miss this. It's actually sailcloth, uh, what, what, uh, I mean, what yeah. Ariel is wrapped in. And in the missing moments, I had Oscar wrap Gabby up in that, and no one noticed it, I don't think. No one caught the reference. <sighs> That's all right. In the original concept art of Gabby as a selkie, I drew her wearing that, too. Mm -hmm. Is that what made you think of it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that I found myself a cheerleader. What should I do with her hair, too? Should I... Give her a cool hairstyle or just her? Some, someone said give her an elegant hat. Gabby doesn't really wear hats. I've drawn, like, pictures of her wearing hats before, but I don't think she's ever worn one in official artwork. Hmm. <laughs> you can sit if you want, David. <clears throat> and you know what? You can watch the live stream uh, on your computer uh -oh. if you go to the Kitarto page. Someone said draw her in his hat. Oh, it was Joe. <laughs> I don't want to show Gabby as somebody who would steal from him. Yeah. Oops, what am I doing? Nib doesn't like to give up her hat. I think probably one of the only people she would allow to wear it is Oscar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Username. Nice. <laughs> Claude. Uh, Claude. <laughs> Paradox, my favorite gem. Uh, <clears throat> someone asked, well, Crystal Claude asked, I hope you don't mind me asking Yamino and Ash, especially in this situation, but do you know of any other webcomic creators? Yes, tons. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific sort of webcomic you're interested in? Like, we could recommend uh, other queer webcomics or. I don't know. Just depends what you're looking for. 
Oh, no, I'm here. here. I got it, David. I got it. was asking because we know uh, Chloe can go get a ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smoothie Smooth asks, and this is a question for you, I'm sure, Elena, do you have any tips for a wannabe webcomic creator? That's a really broad question. Do you have a more, do you have a specific question? Because there's a lot of advice that I could give, but I couldn't tell you all of it in one live stream. There's really a lot of things to keep in mind when making a comic. But if you're asking for just one sound bite of advice, it would be do it. Because I think a lot of people get paralyzed and think they have to make it perfect. But your first thing is never going to be perfect. It's always going to be a work in progress. And that's a good thing. It means you're getting better. So don't wait for it to be perfect. Just do it. Just do it. Hmm. People in the chat are talking about other web comics, and I have some recommendations I can stick out there. The first and foremost one I would recommend is Daughter of the Lilies. That one's a really, really good webcomic. It's themed uh, like, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, if you like that kind of setting, not with the game, but with the various, like, medieval fantasy. Medieval fantasy, like orcs and uh, paladins and stuff like that, dark elves and things. Uh, Check it out. The art is amazing. The story is really cool. And the main character's name is Thistle, which, heck yes. <laughs> like, plant names for the win. Mm -hmm. um, spoken with someone. Spoken by someone with a plant name. Uh, huh. But go check it out. It's a lovely, lovely comic. I can link to it in the chat. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. I'd also recommend Wildlife. Mm -hmm. That's um, been tossed out. As far as I know, neither of these two comics have queer characters in them, though. I'm, they're also both really new, so I'm waiting to see, but Actually, just FYI, if anybody was hoping. Daughter of the Lilies di didn't have a direct queer character yet, but there was a situation that mentions queerness, so it is a thing in this world. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but it's something that... Read it. Just read it. Here it is. Well, I mean, I just... I want... As a, a forewarning, this isn't going to be a comic like Sister Claire or Go Get a Roomie where there's lots of queer representation everywhere. I'm not sure what the creators have in mind in that regard. Yeah. If they, they've given it any thought at all. <laughs> Though, until the revamp of book one, like, Sister Claire doesn't start showing the queer characters for a while either. Well, Sister Claire didn't really have any relationships, period. Mm hmm So. Yeah. I don't know what it is about Gabrielle's expression here, but it reminds me of Michiru. Yeah, it's that little uh, crooked little smile. smile. Mm -hmm. See, lay down. Lay down. Bean Bunny asked, Yamino, is Gabby wearing a bikini? No, I was kind of trying to have her wear this thing. But I think it's kind of hard to see, given that a lot of her is covered <laughs> and cut off. So I'm going to see what I can do to try to make it more apparent. Yeah. Zeke, what are you doing? He's making his bed more comfy. <laughs> Ah, people are asking about Cookie Cat. Um, she's doing okay. Like, her breathing is certainly sounding a lot better. She's very feisty. 
she eats uh, with the gusto of a tiny piglet. And I'm impressed how much food she can intake at a time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't even know where it's going. Like, I give her almost half a can every time I feed her, and she just destroys it. Yeah. <laughs> it goes into another dimension. <laughs> it goes down her gullet. But she's, um, we had a bandage on her ear yesterday, courtesy of the vet, and... She ripped that thing off. Yeah, <laughs> I, I left her alone very briefly. Uh, we were going to put the, the cone back on her to keep her from messing with the bandage. And in the time I left her alone, she ripped off the bandage. So we just put the cone back on her, and we've been slathering her ear with the ointment that the vet gave us. It still looks pretty... Um, it still looks bad, but it doesn't look as bad as it did. And yeah. now, thanks to the cone around her head, which she really, really hates, it's a lot harder for her to uh, squish litter into her wound. So mm -hmm. that's good. <clears throat> Snowy is asking, Ash or Eleanor, could we or will we see an AU done by you guys like a comic chapter, not likely, or a live write or a missing moment? Um, no, Ash has done some live writes that are AUs. I Yeah, only one at this moment. Um, <clears throat> but not a comic, not a missing moment, but for a live write, yes, one of the live writes that's coming up is going to be a live write about Oscar, and it's superhero themed. It was requested by a patron, and I've, I've had it on, like, in my queue for a while, but it's one of those that I've been really, really thinking about, because it's, I, like, I will admit right here that I don't usually like superhero stories. And there's a lot of problems with the superhero genre just in general, and it doesn't make me want to write anything like that. But I think I have an idea, and I think I can spin it in such a way that it will be interesting for everyone to read. So you can look forward to that one. Are you going to take my suggestion with the superhero? I, yeah, I'm pretty positive I am. It was a very good one. Thank you, Eleanor. Yay! See, not all the good story ideas come from me. Uh, like, a fair share come from... Your dear artist. A fair share come from you. Your dear writer. <laughs> <gasps> Maybe instead of her cone, I'll leave her like this. Yeah, someone said pearls. Hmm. Paranucleus. Lol. Can I borrow the power cord? How much power do you have? I don't have a power cord. Oh, um, oh it's okay. I don't I don't need it just yet. It's fine. I'm gonna make this a shell instead. Like a can. <laughs> don't you fall asleep on me. I'm not I don't, don't you fall asleep. <laughs> Laura asked, speaking of the superhero in you, Ash, how's the ideas for that one? Still struggling with names? I've never really been struggling with names. It's more about roles. Um, you'll see. <laughs> I'm not worried about not being inventive enough to come up with a name. I think I'm pretty inventive. What, like a superhero name? Yeah. Like, I can come up with a song on the spot, so a superhero name should not present too much of a problem. It's the... Oscar would be Dazzler. <laughs> the Dazzler. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's actually a superhero called that already. I know. Uh, and you know what her power is? Sparkling. Geez. So, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think. I don't know. I don't know 
how much about superheroes? Good questions tonight, guys. Mm -hmm. And Dean said, oh, Ashton Yamino, I finally got to try bubble tea for the first time. Oh, was it good? Before you say anything, if it was bad, don't judge all bubble tea by that one. <laughs> hmm. Smoothie Smooth asked another very broad question. Well, I don't know if it's too terribly broad. Where, Eleanor, did you come up with the idea for your comic? Um, I don't think there was really just one source for it. Is my about page still down on Sister yeah, Claire? I it think is. it is. Yeah, I used to have an about page where I talked about a lot of influences on the comic, but I think growing up uh, in Roman Catholic school was an influence on choosing nuns as a theme. I really liked movies about nuns as a kid. I, I love The Sound of Music. I love Sister Act. And I think it's because they showed nuns as being like young and nice to children and everything that the nuns in Catholic school, in my experience, were not. And I thought it was like this really fun fantasy where nuns were actually decent people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think that's why I always had this like interest in nuns as a character type. But... As far as the art style and stuff, I think Powerpuff Girls was a big influence. Various <clears throat> anime that I liked have been an influence, and some of them are really obvious when you're reading the comic. Um, certain characters are kind of homages to characters I liked from other things. Mm -hmm. As for the story, um, I think it's pretty clear to see that it wasn't super thoroughly planned out at the beginning and it's gotten much more well structured and planned out as Ash was added to the team <laughs> someone who's an actual writer but <laughs> I had a lot of ideas for where I wanted it to go but <clears throat> Ash really helped to solidify them and make sense of them and occasionally tell me no that's terrible we can't do that oh wait hang on uh, people can't yeah this, the image is busted Oh, no. Maybe. Okay, let me try to fix that. Wait, is it... I just canceled the... It's restreaming now. Okay. Okay. Is it working now, guys? Are we back? <laughs> Give it a sec. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. So. I, I restarted the stream, so. Perfect. There we go. Were you done with your answer here? Um, well, I hope it wasn't cut off. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it was. I think, I mean, people had the audio the entire time. Yeah, true. So. <clears throat> it got cut off, though, because there's always a bit of lag. Mm. I don't know. I felt like I was just kind of rambling anyway. Hmm. Oh, Laura asked, do we know Gabby's beloved yet? Yes. Yes, you yes, do. That's not a hard one. David, uh, did you catch up on the comic already? Uh, I think the last page. It's a pretty quick one. It has no text on it at all. Excuse me. Snowy asked, is Claire an orphan? No. She's not. That's what she was told. That's what she was told, but that's not the truth. <laughs> um, <clears throat> even so, like, 
Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, she was found. Yeah, but I mean, she wasn't abandoned, is the thing. Like, or made bereft by the death of parents. Not quite. You'll see. Kilandra asked, How was Claire made? How is Babby formed? How <laughs> is Babby formed? <laughs> 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 Lots of people in the chat are saying, I got the impression she grew from the horn taken from Hanabi. That's a good theory, but that's not the entire answer. We all say. Excuse me. I've seen some people in the comments get it, and every time they do, I do this little Snoopy dance around my computer. Uh, there have been so many hints, but you know, sometimes it's a little hard to put together when I'm throwing everything at you. You'll see. I remember when there was, when you talked about that witch that Oscar sold her hair to, her and, hair, her blood. Oh, her blood, yeah. And everybody was like, oh, that's going to be so important later. But it was like a throwaway. <laughs> it wasn't even a throwaway. It was supposed to indicate how poor they are. Yeah, like, but like everybody thought that was going to be a major plot point, And yeah. then it turned out to not be I, at it, all. It was kind of, I guess, an unintentional red herring. Yeah. But it's more that, you know, e here, even in modern times, when people are really, really poor... They sell body parts and they, blood and plasma. And the things. whole term, like, selling your body does not always mean prostitution. Mm -hmm. Like, it also means selling plasma, selling blood. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but if you look at any kind of... Like, if you Google map a plasma center near you, you will undoubtedly find it in... Uh, poorer neighborhood. <clears throat> Ash donated plasma mm -hmm. one time, and it was a pretty... Twice. Yeah, it was a really <laughs> unpleasant experience. It's because they tried to do it too quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had it done many times before in the hospital, and it was never a problem. But... At the plasma center, they instead of drawing it out over a couple of hours, it's done in like 40 minutes. And whenever they'd start to give me my red cells back, it, that was when <laughs> I would start to feel really ill. <clears throat> oh, Styx AR asked, what is plasma? Like, where in the body? It's a part of your blood. It's the clear part. Mm-hmm. If whenever uh, blood is spun in a centrifuge, the like the red cells separate from the plasma. The plasma is the clear stuff. Sometimes you'll see it like when you're getting a scab and it's not quite solid yet. Mm -hmm. It's the clear part it's, of it. It's clear slash yellow. Yeah. Or sometimes when you have a band-aid that's a little leaky, it shows the yellow plasma. Mm -hmm. Let's not talk about that anymore in case there's people who are sensitive to this yeah. sort of thing in the chat. <laughs> like Sarah. <laughs> oh, she's fine. <clears throat> she just doesn't like to see her blood. Yeah, that's that's true. <sighs> mm <laughs> Ella, um, someone linked to this nun cowgirl and wants to know if she's still going to be in Sister Girl. <laughs> oh, <But>. no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and no. Oh, no. <clears throat> Although I think that the idea of Abraham is like super, super vaguely based mm. on her. Yeah. Hmm. 
that character went through a couple of different redesigns in my head before I eventually just scrapped her completely because there wasn't really a place for her. But, um, yeah. Bean Bunny asked, Hey, um, other than Magpie and Oscar, as that is the only, as they are the only two trans slash gender fluid characters I know of in the story, do you plan to have any more trans spectrum characters coming to the story? Well, there's Mummel as well. Um, and doubtless there will be more. There's Grimm, but sure. I don't want to count Grimm as like, you know, representation since they're an animal. But Well, Grimm is not entirely an animal, just usually manifests... So, yeah, that's that's kind of an iffy... Um, I don't think any of the shards have a specific gender identity, but no. again, a lot of them are not characters most people would relate to. Yeah. Um, there, there will certainly be more, and, you know, whether they are main characters remains to be seen, but you can bet your buns that if I can find some way to fit them in there, and there's really no reason why I shouldn't... There may also be original characters that are requested through Patreon mm -hmm. that are because we have a lot of queer mm -hmm. followers, and I would not be surprised if at some point we get a Patreon OC who is gender fluid or something. Yeah, like I, we have a very very large cast already, and when I say main character, I mean someone that the story will stick with. As y'all have seen, like. The side characters are no real, really less important. We may introduce a character that has a huge bearing on the plot and stuff like that, and <clears throat> doesn't exactly show up in the main cast. Good question. <laughs> oh, Snowy, that's a good question. Snowy's asking if there's going to be more than one Gabby T. Like, uh, oh, like a sulky Gabby versus a mm -hmm. a blue girl, blue lady Gabby. Mm -hmm. I had not planned to have more than one. Laura is asking. If I will work more on the live art I started yesterday, the one with Michelle, Sylvia, and the twins, uh, and Pedro. <laughs> Pedro! Uh, the only, like, if you were there, you saw I already deleted some of it because it's spoilery. Um, I... I have to be really, really careful writing that particular time because there is a lot that you all don't know yet, and I don't want... There's some things that I don't mind hinting at pretty heavily in the lives, but there's also other things that I really want to save for... Reveals in the comic and stuff. Reveals in the comic and the missing moments. Yeah. <clears throat> Lava said, you could always make it a happy AU, a no one dies AU. I'm not talking about anyone dying. That's the thing. There's something, there's a lot of somethings you don't know. And I... I know what you're talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. And I... It's really hard to write that particular time without revealing it. So, mm, I may not continue that one. Just because it's... At least not for now, maybe. Yeah. It's a bit dangerous. The The thing that you're worried about revealing is actually coming up relatively soon in missing moments, I think. Yeah. So eventually you could continue it when that's been revealed. <laughs> Diane said, I just want to be happy and hope that one of the parents aren't dead when they get there. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to say anything. <laughs> As your voice wobbles traitorously. Um, uh, <laughs> that's what AU fix are for. Yeah. 
That's what fanfic is for. <laughs> you sound like Momo. I know, I'm doing her voice. That's something that I've revealed more than once, though, and I will not hesitate to reveal again uh, to people who... This is especially important for coming up missing moments, but Momo does not die. She's the only character who has the, like, do not kill post-it note <laughs> stuck on her head. <laughs> yeah, like, Momo does not die. I refuse to kill Momo. I remember when I made her, and Elena and I, well, I can't take full credit for making her, but, like, when I conceived of the idea of her and talked with Elena about her, showed Elena what I thought she should look like, and then Elena, you know, put her own spin on it. Um, I'm sorry, she didn't look anything how like you <laughs> No, but I, I love her anyway. That's yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> but in any case, uh, I remember as I was writing her, I looked up at Elena and I was like, she cannot die. <laughs> like, she just can't. And later, everyone became really, really attached to her. And, I mean, obviously. And, yeah, she's, she's protected. I guarantee literally no one else. <laughs> David, what's that term? For, like, the safety bubble around protagonists. Uh, character shield. Yeah, like, <laughs> they can't die because they're main characters. That does not apply in Sister Claire like, to anyone except Momo. Well, this took a lot if, longer than I thought it would, but here I'm done with the line art, finally. Uh, if every... you're not careful, you also may end up with a character that's too cool to live. Uh, I a lot of people <laughs> steal the main character's thunder. <laughs> so, uh, like, a I lot of people go. were concerned about that with Clementine, and I'm like, oh, Jonathan. Oh, <laughs> she was too cool to live. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and people were saying that 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 trope is called plot armor. Ah, okay. I was just remembering something David had mentioned before, where he called it something else. Uh, uh, or plot armor. Yeah. Yeah, Mamo does not die. Speaking of tropes, I'm impressed every time I look at the Sister Claire TV tropes page. Like, I hadn't looked at it for, like, two years or something. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it again recently when someone linked to it in the comments. And I was like, wow, people have actually been updating it. There's a lot of stuff there. And for the most part, I think it's a pretty fun read and pretty accurate. And then there's some things on there that I'm like... What were you thinking when you wrote this? Like, that is so not... that. That's not my comic. <laughs> that's not my baby. <laughs> that's not my baby. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Laura asked, Hey girls, have you ever, while plotting, writing, or drawing Sister Claire thought, this is so going to turn into fic. Well, I don't know about that specifically, but there have definitely been some moments, especially in the most recent comic pages, where I was like, people are going to ship this! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, and they did, and I'm happy! <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all know what I'm talking about. Bunnicula Sethley is on the character page. I was so happy someone liked my bun enough to add her. <laughs> yes, everyone loves the bun witch. And you'll see her again soon. <laughs> Calandra said, I ship Marie and Claire so hard to do the latest pages. And uh, Laura said, Marie and Claire, Marie and Claire, bangs fist on table. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, I keep humming that. No, I've got it in my head. I'm obsessed with that song now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bean Bunny asked, have you ever seen porn of your comic? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what usually ticks me off is that not that it's porn. I'm actually really flattered that people draw porn of Sister Claire. Mm -hmm. I think in the, in a way, it's like they got to really like it to want to bang your characters. You know? <laughs> like, it tells me that they really care. They're really invested. What usually bothers me, though, is when they have the characters acting super out of character mm -hmm. or if it's kind of like violent or abusive looking, then it really bothers me. It, like, I... Um... I don't want to kill anyone's joy, but there's there's one thing that I don't like to see. Um, Is it porn with Claire in it? Yeah. 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 Claire's ace. <laughs> like, uh, and Claire's not really interested in sex, at least not at this particular point in the comic. Um, and pretty much all, like, I've seen porn of Claire, and it's usually really, like, cheesecakey and creepy, sometimes even pedophilic. Generally. What also weirds me out, too, though, is that there was more porn of her when she was very visibly pregnant than now. Well, some people are into that. I know, but I'm really not, so I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Run away! <laughs> huh. Some, yeah, some people are saying, Claire's too young. She's 19. She's not literally too young, but just the way she's designed, she does look younger than she is, and so it can be pretty creepy, especially when people interpret it in a even more childish-looking style. Mm. Like, Claire, like... And she has spent her life in the Abbey. I mean, she's very sheltered. Like, yeah, even if she's technically, you know, legal and of age, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that she's mentally prepared. Yeah, that... Yeah, she might be 19, but... Yeah. That being said, if someone wants to draw Marie kissing Claire, please, please God, draw it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I also don't want to dissuade anybody from drawing whatever kind of porn they want. It's just maybe don't put it in the sister Claire tag where yeah. I'm going to see it if you know it's something that's going to upset a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, totally tag us, but maybe don't put it in the main tag. <laughs> um, send us a message about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Um, someone's asking if your evil twin Anime is still active. Anime is so busy <laughs> lately. <laughs> she hasn't really had time to shine. Oh, someone said, yeah, that's what I'm saying about Claire being mentally unprepared. She would probably scream at a penis. Actually, I don't really think she would. Uh, Something that Claire has done is helped out Marguerite in the uh, the Abbey Hospital, the infirmary, not hospital. Um, so, doubtless she has seen a penis before. And Laura asked... I don't think Claire is horrified by nudity. She's not. She's really not. Um, no. She might be like, oh, I didn't think they could look like that. But yeah. <laughs> she, like, oh my, that's high def. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Wow, the hair is coming out of what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, people are asking if Claire knows if Oscar is trans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Claire does. I don't know, though, if she's really aware of Oscar being trans so much as she probably knows what Oscar looks like, but doesn't perceive it as... Um, yeah. yeah. It, it's, <clears throat> I think Oscar has been so normalized to mm. all the children in the Abbey, like mm -hmm. the twins and Claire, that they don't really see her as standing out. No. Like, they don't they don't think of it as unusual at all. Um, <clears throat> Oscar's not really worried about the children she would be more worried about. I mean, obviously she was worried about what Olga would think. Um, well, she's more worried about people who have not been, you know, brought up with it being normalized, mm -hmm. and especially around old guys <clears throat> from the Helsings who can are notoriously like very strict and can be very harsh about their opinions about things. I think mm -hmm. 
that's something I've really, really wanted to, like, eventually, when we get into the background of Helsing characters, I would like to introduce a trans Helsing. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than one, actually. Uh, a lot of people have asked about, um, wait, I'm, I, I just lost my train of thought. Like, I mean, it crashed like a locomotive with flames and everything. So ignore me. <laughs> were you going to, because someone had just asked if there were going to be more trans characters. So oh, yeah. Answering yeah. the question. Yeah. So I really, when we get to the Helsing Abbey, I'm really excited to get there anyway. Me too. I need to name it. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, the Crystal Plot is asking, do deer have gory holes when their antlers fall? No, not usually. Um, they're little soft spots. If they get torn off too early, then yeah, it's pretty nasty. But And they do rub the antlers, uh, they rub the velvet off on trees, and that can look pretty gross, because it's like furry blood vessels really close to the... Just Google it. <laughs> it's, it's nasty. <laughs> someone read that as glory holes so did i uh, <laughs> what the someone asked if if deer have gory holes oh. when their antlers fall off and the first time i saw that i also read glory holes which tells you where my mind immediately leaps. Ash. No. No, no, no. Laura asks, Hey, here's a sneaking suspicion. Will there be a change in POV next comic page? Will we go back to Jackson and Company? No. No, no, no. I mean, of course we will eventually, but this scene is far from over. This one is, this scene is so important, y'all. This is so, so important. It's one that we have both really, really wanted to do for a long time. Elena told me about the first idea she had about this scene a really long time ago. I mean, we weren't even dating yet. Okay? I had not moved here yet. Yeah, like I said, we weren't even dating yet. We were, yeah, it, it was a while ago. And <laughs> it's it's really important to both of us, so... You weren't even working on the comic yet mm -mm. when I told you about this idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm ready for... What? I mean, I think I'm ready to post this. I think it's Yay. done. You want to do another one? Yeah. I'm having a good time. Yeah, okay. Um, right. Let me... Or did you want to um, live draw? Live write? Oh, live write, yeah. I want to talk to people. So. Okay. It's easier for me to talk to them with my voice than All right. try to... The, I, I really hate the Google Docs chat. I'm going to end this recording here then. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider following our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat place. Bye-bye.